Now, talking about the topic Yahweh. Yud, He, Wow, He, or Yud, He, Vav, He. Yud, He, Wa, He, or Yud, He, Vav, He. Because the Old Testament is written with consonants. Consonants. Vowel markings were added later on. By the Mezarites, a Jewish, a group of Jewish scribes, 500 years after the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, over 6,800 times in the Hebrew Old Testament, the four Hebrew consonants representing the divine name appear. One more time. The divine name, yud He vav He, modern Hebrew, yud He wah He, Yahuwah, Yaho, Yehovah, Yahweh, Yahweh, appears over 6,800 times. Right? Yud he wa he or yud he vav he, okay, over 6,800 times. Okay, with that said, in English, it would be represented as y h w h y h v h. Now, most English translations do not give you a form of the divine name in their translations. So, if you have an NIV, NASV. NKJV, New King James Version, MEV, Modern English Version, you will not find the divine name appearing a single time in the Old Testament. Not once. Not once. Now, now, in the King James Version, it appears a handful of times. There are translations like the Legacy Standard Bible, New Jerusalem Bible, World English Bible, American Standard Version that will give you a form of the divine name in the English translation of the Old Testament. American Standard Version will use Jehovah. Legacy Standard Bible will use Yahweh. New Jerusalem Bible will use Yahweh. Why is this important? The reason why this is important is because if God inspired the authors of the Old Testament to use the divine name, and to spell out the divine name, four Hebrew consonants, Yud, He, Wa, or Vav, He, which in English would be Y H W H or Y H V H. That means God wants you to be familiar with that name. Yud, He, Vav, He, Yud, He, Wa, He appears over 6,800 times. Yeah, this is on Facebook, brethren. John Moss, you can't see it. It's on Facebook. All right. Now, in most. Bible translations, most Bible translations, they do not give you a form of the divine name. Here, I'll give you an example. Exodus 3.15. We're compared with Legacy Standard Bible and IV. Okay, guys, you got it here? All right. Yahweh, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Everyone got it here? Everyone got it, right? Okay. Now look at the NIV. NIV. Satan writes, the Lord, but notice the word Lord is all capitals. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. In most of your translations, they will not give you a form of divine name, whether Yahweh or Jehovah or Yahweh. They will render the divine name as Lord in all capitals or God in all capitals. And the over 6,800 times it appears. The Lord. Well, if you don't know, if you have not read the preface to your translation, and you don't know that they will indicate to you that the divine name appears, and you'll know it because they'll render divine name as the word Lord in all capitals, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, or the word God in all capitals, capital G, capital O, capital D. You'll have no idea that here in Hebrew, God did not say the Lord, the God of your fathers. He said, Yud He, Vav He, Yud He, Wa He. That's what he said. Now, if you've been following me for years, you already know this. If you've been following me for years, you already know this because I've been teaching this. This is not new, but we're creatures of repetition. We need to hear something repetitively until it becomes second nature. So it's good to be reminded. Some of you, this is new. How many of you 
Only discovered this for the first time today. I know Albie knows this already. He's an apologist. He knows this. He's been studying. So how many of you only discover this today? Wow. I did not know that in the Hebrew Old Testament, the divine name yud Hey vav or wa Hey appears over 6,000 other times. And yet most English translations in the Old Testament don't give you a form name, either Yahweh or Jehovah, but will use the word Lord in all capitals, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, right? Or we'll put the word God in all capitals. And if you haven't read the preface, you won't know why they do that. Why is it all capitals? Because they're telling you here the divine name appears. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Okay, ready? Further examples. I'm going to tell you which translations have a form of divine name. Now, that's the main reason why I use the Legacy Standard Bible. That's the main reason why I use the Legacy Standard Bible. Why? Because it uses a form of the divine name. A form of the divine name. Now, here, let me show you, if you're using an IV, when you're going to know that the word Lord stands in place of the divine name. Watch here. Let's see if you're paying attention. Okay. Psalm 110, verse 1. This is only true of the Old Testament. Let me repeat. Only true of the Old Testament. Notice the difference. Legacy Standard Bible. Yahweh says to my Lord. Notice, capital L, but lowercase o-r-d. And here, the divine name. But watch the NIV. The Lord said to my Lord. If you're not a discerning reader, you won't see the difference. Here, Lord is all capitals. But here, Lord is all lowercase. Why? Because here, it's a divine name. Here, it's the word Adoni. It's not the same Hebrew word. Let me show it to you. See? It's not the same Hebrew word. You with me there? I'm with you, Sam. I know you're busy. It's okay, brother. Okay, did you catch the difference? Everyone catch it? Not the same word. Here, the Lord is all capitals. You see it, right? Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. But here, Lord is all lowercase. Why? Because here in Hebrew, it's Adoni, A-D, A-D-O-N-I, transliteration. And here, it's the divine name. How many of you are shocked by this? Before I get into it, let me know when you want me to wrap it up. How much time you got? A few people here on TikTok uh, haven't heard this, so this is good. No, good. That's good because uh, creature repetition for those of us here. But how much time you got, brother? You have another hour or so? Yeah, absolutely. And okay. isn't, isn't Psalm 1, I'm sorry, Psalm 110, one, one of the go-to of Anthony Buzzbird? That's the what again? Anthony Buzzbird's go-to oh, verse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the favor you tend to have. So see, the Messiah is not Yahweh. He is Adon, Adon or Adoni. Adon. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, watch again Legacy Standard Bible. Legacy Standard Bible. Here, watch Legacy Standard Bible. Yahweh says to my Lord, and it is in Hebrew, it's Neum, Yahuwah, La Adoni. That's what Hebrew says. Here, I'll show it to you. Yahweh says to my Lord. Here. See? Now, when you ask me why they didn't, well, I'll tell you what. I did a session long, long, too, long not too long ago, responded Greg Stafford. Make sure you pray God will preserve my channel that he doesn't need, that he's pleased to preserve it. They don't delete it because I got to be on my best behavior for 90 days. And once that's over, then the strikes are removed because I get one more strike, it's gone. There is a letter by Edwin Palmer who was in charge of the translation of NIV. You know what he says, the reason why? And I'll find the letter. I'll show it to you. I read it. And Greg Stafford was right. He condemned them for it. Edward Palmer, who is since deceased, who is a Calvinist like Louis, Louis Fagethart, he admits in a letter, do you know the reason why, the main reason why? Good to see you, Brother Valerian, one of our regulars. The reason why they chose not to use a form of the divine name is because they're afraid they would lose money on sales and that many people would not buy the NIV. That's the reason he gives. I'm not lying. I'm going to show you the letter. He says, 
They're afraid that if they went with the form of divine name, people who are used to the King James Version would not buy the NIV and they would lose money, right, on the translation. I'll show it to you. I'm going to prove it to you. Now watch. Here it is. Bible Hub Interlinear. Bible Hub Interlinear. I know. Too much distraction. I know, brother. Bible Hub Interlinear. Here it is for all of you. I'm going to send you a link. You can send it to them. Get right here. There you go. Here it is. You see it right in front of your eyes. You don't even need to read Hebrew, right? So look. You hey, wa or vav hey, Yahweh. La David, Mizmor, Neum, La Adoni. There it is. So now if you want to know which translations will give you a form of the divine name in English and their translation of the Old Testament, because this only appears in the Old Testament. Let me repeat. This is only true of the Old Testament. Let me repeat. The divine name appears over 6,800 times in the Old Testament. This does not apply to the Greek New Testament. So don't get confused. Old Testament, Hebrew. Not New Testament written in Greek. Okay? The translations that will use a form of divine name in their English translation of the Old Testament, Legacy Standard Bible, World English Bible, New Jerusalem Bible, Jerusalem Bible, American Standard Version. So let me show you. Let's go here. Let's look at translations. All right? BibleGateway.com. Exodus 3.15, multiple translations. I hope you understand this is necessary background information by the grace of God so you can learn. It may not be as entertaining. It's okay. We're not here to entertain so we can get thousands. I want quality people who learn facts and then be transformed by that, those facts, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And all of us love Jesus Christ more. And share it with the world. Here. Exodus 3.15. How many translations you see using a form of divine name? Jehovah, American Standard Version. No, not in the Septuagint, Matthew Mattingly. Septuagint, Septuagint uses a form, uses the Greek word for Lord. Kyrios. 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 Lord. I'll get into that in, in a minute. All right. Here, American Standard Bible, Jehovah. All right. How many use a form of divine name? Okay, look. Look, it's all Lord. Notice Lord in all capitals, right? But pay attention. Here, complete Jewish Bible. He does it here, yud he vav he But whenever it appears, he doesn't use a form of the name. He uses Adonai, complete Jewish Bible, Adonai. Look at this. I'm the eternal God. That's not what it says. Okay. Darby, Jehovah. Okay. Dewey Rames, American edition. Remember, Dewey Rames is a translation of the Latin Vulgate. It's getting it from the Latin. So in the Latin and Greek versions of the Old Testament, they use the, the word for Lord. Right? Dominus, Kyrius. And I'll explain why in a minute. Here, this one here. Here's another one. Easy to read version. Yahweh. Now, that doesn't mean they use the name Yahweh in every verse, but here specifically. Lord, 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 okay. Lord. All right. Lord, it doesn't even put in all capitals. Lord, all capitals. Lord, capitals. Here, Holman Christian Standard Bible. This was their older edition. Where in a few places they use the word Yahweh. But when they updated Holman Christian Standard Bible, when they updated it right here, Christian Standard Bible, they got rid of it. The Lord. You see it? The original Christian Standard Bible called Holman Christian Standard Bible in a few places would use the word Yahweh. And their updated version, they abandoned that practice. And that's another problem with modern versions. That's another problem with modern versions. They're always updating their versions so you don't know what you get in the update. 
You with me there? We're with you. Everyone got it, even on TikTok? Yep. It's all necessary before I get into the topic. So NIV today may read differently from the NIV in the future. And if you want, I'll give you specific examples. The 1984 NIV differs from the 2011 NIV in places that you'll be shocked. Can I do that too, show them? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, you guys gotta get shocked. Stuff I've already covered. That's why I pray the Lord preserve the channel and the backup channel downloads all of this before, God forbid, if my channel gets a lead. Okay, watch here. This is what you shall say, Lord, okay? Lord, look how many don't use a form of divine name, Lord, right? Legacy Standard Bible, Yahweh. Here, this one. Lexham English Bible, Yahweh. But I'm going to see if they are consistent and use the name every time the divine name appears. We'll look at it in a minute. Here, this one is the Living Bible. Okay. Jehovah. Names of God. Yahweh Elohim. I don't know if they use it consistently. So I'm going to look at Psalm 110, 1. Okay. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord, now let me know the reaction of TikTok. New Living Translation uses here in this place, it uses Yahweh. But we're going to know if it uses it every time it appears. Orthodox Jewish Bible, B'nai Israel, Hashem. It doesn't even use the word Yahweh, it says Hashem, the name. That's what rabbinic Jews do. They'll say Hashem, the name. Okay, let's go here. Here it's Adonai, not even Yahweh. Which in Hebrew means Lord. Okay. The eternal world English Bible, Yahweh. Okay. Now here's where I'm gonna know if they use the word Yahweh consistently, not only this place. Psalm 110, verse 1. Let's see. Okay. Now let's go here. Let's see. The Lord, capital. Here, American Standard Bible, always American Standard Version always uses Jehovah. The Lord, the Lord, Lord. Here, Christian Standard Bible, the Lord. Okay, complete English Bible. When the Lord said to my man, here. Common English Bible, not complete, sorry. Complete Jewish Bible, Adonai. Contemporary English, the Lord. Darby, see, that means it consistently uses Jehovah. Okay, look at it here. Easy to read version. It doesn't use Yahweh here. That means it doesn't consistently use the word Yahweh, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Okay. Tell me, if, are you guys getting bored? Let me know their feedback. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. You see it? Yep. The Lord. What's their feedback? Legacy Standard Bible, Yahweh. Yes. This one also uses it consistently. Declaration of Yahweh. And this is literal. Good. Living Bible is using Jehovah. Praise the Lord. I guess it does use it consistently. Let me see. Let me see this. Man, I'm impressed. Let's see. Psalm 68.4. Yep. But no, I don't think so. Because here it doesn't translate it Jehovah. No, it didn't translate it as Jehovah. <clears throat> well, because it says God. Okay, good. Let me check. I just want to check. I think Living Bible does use the word Jehovah consistently. Let me find out. Let me just find Guys, I'm just saying because I'm not familiar with this translation because it didn't sell too well and it's become obsolete, right? Let me just check for my, my own edification. Psalm 2-7, let's see. No, see? I will reveal the everlasting words of God for the Lord has said to me, no, here, it's Yahweh. See, it's not consistent. Yahweh said to me, nope, not consistent. All right, that means only uses in a few scattered places. Sad. All right. MAV, the Lord. Names of God, they will use Yahweh because they're giving you the Hebrew names of God in the Old Testament. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Oh, my goodness. The Lord, all right? See it? Now we go to, we went Legacy Standard Bible, but here you have World English Bible, Yahweh. You got it? Mm hmm Everyone got it? Yep. What are they say? What are they saying on? 
A quick question. LSB is consistent. Is LSB consistent using the divine name? All the time. That's one of the translations. Let me tell you which translations use the divine name every time it appears. Let me remind you again. Legacy Standard Bible, American Standard Version, World English Bible, New Jerusalem Bible, Jerusalem Bible. The only problem is American Standard Version, it's outdated, 1901. Didn't catch on because it doesn't have the cadence of the King James Version. New Jerusalem Bible, Jerusalem Bible, too liberal, too free in its translation. So the only ones you got left is World English Bible and Legacy Standard Bible. That's it. That now, do me a favor. Keep your recommendations to yourself. We love you, brother, but not too much. And Sam, the Legacy Standard Bible, that's... So I heard this thing. I don't know if it's true that the translation is based on AI. Is that true statement? AI? I have no idea about that. What I know is that Legacy Standard Bible is the updated version of the New American Standard Bible 19. produced by John MacArthur Seminary. Okay. I, yeah. translation. I heard it was based on the 1995 though, right? Which part of Legacy Standard Bible? Is the updated, updated version of the New American Standard Bible? Wasn't clear, Albie. Pretend no, you were listening. Because you did a session on the, the difference between the 1995 and the 2020, which was horrible. How are they going to update the 2020 when their translation came out around the same time? Okay, gotcha. Well, I, wasn't sure, I wasn't sure when it came Hold on, guys. Hold on. Marcos, who was it also? It was Marcos. And who else? <laughs> What's going on today with you three and Caleb? How are you going to have Legacy Standard Bible be the update of the 2020 edition when Legacy Standard Bible comes around, out around the same time? That means obviously they're using 1995. When the LSB came out. Was it again, brother? I wasn't aware when the uh, LSB came out. I thought yeah, it was. It could not be an update of the updated New American Standard Bible. When they were already in contract to update New American Center Bible, same time the New American Center Bible 2020 edition came out. They were they were caught because they wanted to take New American Center Bible 1995 and update it and use the divine name. How's it how can it be based on 2020? <laughs> Oh, it's, I think it's me today, man. It's not. It's, something's going on today. Logo. Theos. Vatos locos forever. Can we okay now, brother? Yes. We're Are you good. talking and you muted yourself? No. We're here. We're good. Everyone okay? Guys, I don't know what it is. I think it's me today. We had three meltdowns today. Caleb. Marcos and my friend here. All right. Anyway, now we got it. Everyone got it? Yep. Pins and needles. Needles and pins. A happy man is a man that grins. What am I mad about? I'm mad about the fact that either I suck as a communicator or people are pretending to be listening. Okay. All right. We ready now? Ready. Lord have mercy on me. I'm in the wrong field. Honestly, God has a sense of humor. Dude, I am so impatient. And yet he has me teaching. Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. Yeah, don't use New American Bible Revised Edition. Even Doc Beaumont, the convert to the Catholic Church, decreed by Louis Fagdehart's God, uh, says it's a terrible translation. Stay away from it. Anyway, everyone got it so far? Everyone got it so far? The divine yeah. name, yud He vav He, or in ancient Hebrew, yud He wa He, appears over 6,000 inner times. But most of your English translations do not give you a form of the name in English. And it's only true of the Old Testament. Don't ask me about New Testament. New Testament is in Greek. They didn't use yud he vav he. They use the Greek word for Lord, Kyrios, which is the next element before I get into the topic about Jesus. I have to give you this background to do justice to the topic. This is not waste. So if we have to do another part. Some other time we will. You need to learn this stuff. Now. Let me show you the letter by Edwin Palmer. Edwin Palmer. Why they did not use a form of divine name in the English translation of the Old Testament for the NIV. Edwin Palmer. 
Edwin Palmer. All right. Here you go. Here you go. The letter. It's right here. Let me get you the link. You guys ready to be discussed? It. It was because of money. It was because of money. Let's see if it works. It was because of money. Let me get it for you. Oh my goodness, come on, man. What the hell happened here, dude? It sent me to an evil site, dude. I guess it was one of these fake sites. Sorry. Hold on. Be careful what you click on. Sometimes it takes you, man. I just clicked on something. I hope I didn't get a virus stamp. All right. All right, let me find the letter. Yeah, let me see here. Let me see if I can do cash. Sorry, guys. I want you to see it with your own eyes. Edwin Palmer, letter, Julie Moore. Okay. Letter. Okay. You should have it. Where is it, man? Damn. If this only one has it, it can't be. That's impossible. Hold on, guys. Give me a second, brethren. This is what happens when you ad lib things and everyone gets discombobulated. It's got to be this. Yeah, it's got to be this one, right? No, it's not this one. Where's the letter, dude? Oh, yeah, this is it. I found it. I don't know what happened because when I clicked on it, it sent me to some hack site. Here it is. They have the letter here online. Okay, I'm going to get you the link. Watch. Someone wrote him a letter saying, why don't you have a form of divine name in the English translation of the Old Testament? Here it is. I actually have the book where it mentions this, but it's in his library. There we go again. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. There we go again. Okay. I don't know what the hell is doing here. All right. It's trying to get take me to a site, filthy site. God protect us. Anyway, you guys see it? I don't want to give you links because it keeps jumping to another site. Can everyone see the letter? We see it. All right. Let me enlarge a little more. <clears throat> Guys, I give you the link, but I'm noticing when I click, it then jumps to another site. It's a spam site, and it's showing some wicked images. May God keep us pure. Anyway, here you go. Now, I'm scared to click on this because it says the scan is here. <laughs> I'm really scared. Hold on. Let me just in case because it says the scan is here. Let me just see. Yep. See? It's See? It's not going to work. I know it. Thank the Lord. It got me out of there. All right. Anyway, Miss Julie Moore, February 3rd, 1979. Here it is. Brittany, I want you to read this, Brittany. We'll read this, Brittany. Watch. You're asking why. Dear Miss Julie, thank you for your letter and concern about the fact that the NIV did not use the name Job in the Old Testament. Here you go. Here, this is from the horse's mouth. It's an actual letter. Right? I want to I want to find the book where I they have this letter. It's in his library, which he stole from me, but it's, I forgive him. Here's why we did not. Are you listening, Brittany, everyone? Here's why. Yeah, Yolene, they blocked your whore mother too. Hold on. There's that girl who said she lusts for me. Here's why they didn't go with a form of the divine name. Black and white, Edwin Palmer. Here's why we did not. You're right that Jehovah is a distinct name for God, and ideally, we should have used it. He admits it. We should have used it. But we put two and a half million dollars into this translation, and a sure way of throwing that down the drain is to translate, for example, Psalm 23 as Yahweh is my shepherd. Do you see how wicked that statement is? Wow. So you see how wicked that's, and it's an actual letter. It's not a lie. It's not a forgery. He actually, that's a letter. That's how he responded to the question. You see, everyone, he's telling you for money. Did you see? He admits Psalm 23 is Yahweh's my shepherd or Joe's my shepherd. But we would have wasted two and a half million dollars if we translated it as Yahweh or Jehovah. Why? Immediately, we, we would have translated for nothing. Why? Why would you? Is it about money or is it about honoring God's word? Nobody would have used it. Oh, maybe you and a handful of others. You see, he's being sarcastic. He's making fun of her. See? By the way, brother Pojo, I got your comment on Skype. 
Immediately we'd have transferred nothing, nobody would have used it. Or maybe you and a handful others. But a Christian has to be also wise and practical. We are the victims of 350 years of the King James tradition. So he's now blaming the King James. It is far better to get 2 million to read it. That is how many have bought it to date, right? Then half and to follow the King James, right? Then to have 2,000 buy it and miss the grand truths of the Bible on every page. However, they are following on, on old-fashioned translating and have the correct translation of Yahweh. Furthermore, we do not know if we should say Jahu or Yahweh or Jehovah. Who cares? Use the form of divine name so people know that the divine name appears. And we do cover ourselves in the preface. Now, how many people read the preface? In fact, without me telling you, would you have known that's why the word Lord is all capitals or the word God is all capitals? Would you have known that? Exactly. They tell you in the preface. That's how I knew because I read the preface. It was a hard decision. And many of our translators agree with you. You see, the people translated agreed with Julie. They should have used the form of the divine name. See? Quarter to yours, Edwin Palmer. Right? There you go. It's an actual letter. Even Greg Stafford, an anti-Trinitarian, who started his own movement, Christian Witness of Jah, who went berserk when I just did a series of solid refutations showing his God is a fake God and his Jesus fake Jesus. He read the letter. And he wasn't lying. He's honest. Right there. Okay, now... You guys want me to show you an example of how evolving Bible translations means that you cannot know for certain whether what you're reading today will be the reading of the revised, updated version of a particular Bible. You want me to show you that? Sure. I know you, dude. Take it easy, man. <laughs> Everyone want me to show you examples of that? For example, I'm going to use an NIV 1984 edition. NIV 1984 edition with the updated NIV that came out in 2011. Okay, I've done these before. Let's go to NIV 1984, then, which you can find online. I'll show you where. NIV 1984. Here it is. Oh, well, this is a PDF. If you want to download it as a PDF, here it is. But I'll get you where you can read online for free. Here it is, PDF. Send it to them. Okay. All right, there it is for you. But I will, right? Here it is, but I'll get you where you can read it online for free if you don't want to download it as a PDF. There it is for everyone else. Let me know if you guys are learning and being stimulated. We got to make Rumble grow, guys, because we, we may not be on YouTube. Lord's will be done. Doesn't need me, I need him. All right, now, well, let me go to where you can read online. Why do I keep saying that, dude? <laughs> Can you tell me? Is that right here? They have the NIV 1984 edition. NIV, this one has it. <clears throat> Let me find <clears throat> 1984 edition. Right here. Let's go find it. <clears throat> what was you I'll be right back. I'm going to use the restroom. Thank you for telling me that. That was something really exciting to know. All right. Where's the NIV? No. Okay. Come on, dude. What happened, sir? Where's the new international version? They should have it. They don't have the NIV anymore? What the heck? See, I'll find it for you. Just take it easy. Don't don't get paranoid. New century version. What was the new life version? They removed the NIV? Unbelievable. They had it here. Darn it. They removed it? They used to have it, NIV, 1984 edition, online. Sorry, guys. They had it. They used to have it there, online. Where is it? Here it is. This one here? All right. This is online. Here you go. I guess we got to go with this one, right? Lord have mercy. I Help us, my God. Glory to the Father. I, want to, I don't want to open up the... Yeah, they removed it. It used to be here, guys. They removed it. But here it is. I think this one here. Wow, they removed it? NIV. Let me see if this is the online. I'll let you know if this is it. Let me see. Wow, man. See, you can't keep up with these people. 
Nope, this is the updated version. Guys, I may have to use a PDF. Guys, let me know if we're, we're torturing you because we're trying to, the links keep changing. The, the NIV used to be here on, right here, used to be on studylight.org. I guess they removed the NIV. Why would they do that? That's shocking. Let me see. Why would they do that? Bible versions? Interlinear Bible? Why would they do that, man? No NIV? That tells you they probably don't like the NIV anymore. All right, let's go with the PDF. All right, guys, my apologies. That sucks. This says it's online, so why is it not online? Yep, it's removed here too. Boy, man. All right, 1984. Here it is. Let's go here. Guys, I want you to catch it, all right? Let's go to, watch here, Mark 141. Mark 141. Right here. You guys ready? Mark 141. Let's enlarge it. Mark 141, right? Filled with compassion. This was a man who had a leprous hand. Filled with compassion. Okay. Pay attention, guys. Watch here. Filled with compassion. What did Jesus say to him? Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Did you catch it? When God saw the man with the leprous hand, he goes, I am willing. Be clean because our Lord was filled with compassion. Everyone got it? 1984 edition. 1984 edition. Now watch the updated version. We go to Bible Gateway. We go to NIV here. Bible Gateway. Okay. Mark 1, 41. Okay, watch here again. Let's see if you catch it. Let's enlarge it. And I put it on the screen so you can see it. Okay, right here. Mark 1, 41, NIV 1984, and then the updated vision. A man with leprosy came to him, right, and begged him on his knees, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I'm willing. He said, be clean. Now, here's the updated NIV. Jesus was indignant, anger, angry, indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I'm willing, he said, be clean. So which is it? And I put it on the screen. You see where I have the 1984? See out here, right here, boom, bam. Filled with compassion, NIV 1984. Updated NIV. It's not he's filled with compassion. Jesus was indignant. He was anger, anger, livid. Why? Why? See the difference? 1984 NIV updated. So with modern Bibles that keep evolving, you have no certainty whether what you're reading today will be the same reading in an updated version. Did everyone see it before I move on? All right. Everyone see it? Before I move on? You caught it, right? Okay. Let me show you another one. Let me show you another one. Okay. Let's go here. Let's go to John. John. John 134. John 134. Ready? John 134. You guys all ready? All right. John. Dear John. Dear John. What did John the Baptist say? John 134. What did John the Baptist say? Let's go to John 134. Bless you. 134. John 134. Okay, let's see. When he saw Jesus Lamagon, I have seen and testify that this is the Son of God. I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. That this is the Son of God. I'm going to put it on the screen. Okay, John the Baptist, John 134. I have seen... And testify, testify that this son of God. Now watch. Watch here. Ready? Ready. 
Now we're going to go here. Updated NIV. Watch the 1984 editions on the screen. I just highlighted John 134. I have seen and testified that this is God's chosen one. Same NIV, right? Updated. So did John the Baptist say, this is God's chosen one? Or did he say, this is the son of God? Which one? Can you tell me? Can you tell me, brother, which one? Yeah, we'd have to, uh, we'd have to go with neither at this point. I mean, we don't know, right? Because exactly. both are being used. So the evolving Bible translations will cause you to doubt and put a weapon in the hands of the enemy. See? All these years, you NIV readers were deceived into thinking. John the Baptist said, I testify this is God, the Son of God. Now they're telling you this reading is more likely to be original. <clears throat> God's chosen one. All that time you read Mark 141, filled with compassion. Now they're telling you Jesus was indignant. You see what they're not teaching you in your churches, right? What you're not learning in your Bible studies, your churches, because we are sheep. We're sheeple. I forget the name of the man. He got killed. He actually got murdered in Arizona because he was calling out the corruption of the government. They murdered him. And he was a whistleblower. And he had solid facts. And he called people sheeple. They're leading the sheeple to the slaughter. So this is what's happening. You're asleep. You're not awake. You're asleep. And Satan has crept in stealthily in your Bible colleges, seminaries, institutions, and your translations. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't misquote me. I'm not saying the translators know their tools of the devil. God forbid. I'm not saying that. Many of them are sincere Christians who love and worship the triune God, but because they're duped, they do not know they're being used of the devil to destroy faith, not build faith, because they think they're doing God a favor. And the most dangerous people are the ones who do not know they're being used of Satan. You know the old saying? The path to hell is paved with good intentions. They think they're doing God a favor. That's what they think. They think they're being honest to God. And that makes them more dangerous because they do not know they're being used of the devil. Because that's not their intention. That's not their intention. And that's the one who's more dangerous because he doesn't know. Because Satan doesn't care whether you're working for him or not in the sense that, that you know he's using you. He doesn't care. Even if you think you're opposing Satan working for the kingdom, but you're not guarded, he will still use you nonetheless and laugh all the way to hell. Yep, critical text, get rid of it. Right? See? See that? So what's my point? Let me, again, encourage you. I only use the Legacy Standard Bible because it uses the form of the divine name, Yahweh. But I've been convinced, and I'm not a scholar, I'm a student. I trust Holy Spirit. The most accurate translations will be those based on what's called the majority text, the Byzantine text, which form the majority of the Greek copies of the New Testament. And by the way, the Orthodox will tell you, the Orthodox will tell you this. Eastern Orthodox, the official Greek textual tradition the official family of Greek manuscripts that the Orthodox endorse and give her seal of the approval is the majority text, the Byzantine text. This is why, if you go to an Orthodox church, you'll only find, find in the pews New King James Version or King James Version. That's it. <clears throat> That's it. The Eastern Orthodox Church, they go with the Byzantine text. The majority text, because they form the majority of our Greek copies of the New Testament books. And the Orthodox Church only goes with the Greek version of the Old Testament called the Septuagint. Don't take my word for it. When you go to an Orthodox Church, 
look in the pew. What you're going to find is either New King James Version or King James Version, but not NIV, not ESV, not NASV. So my recommendation is if you are Catholic, work your way up to the Latin Vulgate's translation in English, Dewey Rames, but have a King James if you can understand the Elizabethan language. If not, sadly, you need a Bible that has also Deuterocanonicals, even if you don't accept the inspired, but New King James Version doesn't have it. Modern English Version doesn't have it. World English Bible doesn't have it, because these are the translations that will be based on, that will be based on the majority text, the Byzantine text, right? So they don't have it. That's sad. King James Version 1611 had the Deuterocanonicals. It was part of the translation. They only stopped printing the Deuterocanonicals with the King James Version in 1880s. So work your way up. Work your way up. Now, the Dewey Rames is based primarily on the Latin Vulgate, but you want a translation that's also based on the Greek New Testament, Hebrew Old Testament, looking into the Greek versions of the Old Testament with the Latin. Everyone with me there? <coughs> Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition, because it has the Deuterocanonicals, you'd have to go with it. New Revised Standard Version, right? That one is very gender inclusive. Can I give you an example? You're okay with this, brother, That because they're learning about translations? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I'm just... Uh... I looked up to church fathers under John 134. I see origin quotes it as son of God. Yeah. Numerous times. Yeah. 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 Now, let me show you what I mean by New Revised Standard version, updated edition. They've even updated that too. I don't know if you know that. Here, let me give you an example. They've updated it. Here. Let's go here. Let's go here. Let me use it. Let me, let me, let me show you what I mean. Gender inclusive. What does gender inclusive mean? There are some times where the word for brothers in the Old Testament and New Testament is inclusive, means brothers and sisters, everyone. But at times, it's specific to males. The context will determine that for you. But here, let me give you an example. New Revised Standard Version, that too has been updated. I don't know if you know that. It's been updated. Here. Here you go. New Revised Standard Version, Anglicized. New Revised Standard Version, Anglicized Catholic Edition. New Revised Standard Version, Catholic Edition. New Revised Standard Version, Updated Edition. Boom, let's click. Let's watch here. Watch, gender inclusive. If your brother or sister sins against you. Now, the, he, the Greek word is brothers, but here it's not just males, it's the females. Brethren, brothers, can be used inclusively for all the members of the body of Christ. But watch here. If your brother or sister sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If you are listened to, you have regained that one. But if you're not listened to, take one or two other witnesses, others along with, ah, along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the person refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile tax collector. Now, if you want to know how their gender-inclusive policy has affected their translation, all right, let's go with Legacy Standard Bible. Watch here. Tell me if the people on TikTok, they're enjoying this or they think it's a waste of their time. <clears throat> no, no, we're getting it. It's good feedback, actually. We have, uh, looks like nothing but students here, so. Good. Now, watch the difference. Here is. Like it's the standard Bible. Now, if your brother sins, not brother or sister, even though it's inclusive of brothers and sisters, all the members of the Christ, go and show him his fault between you and him. If he listens to you, you have won your brother. Look at here. If you are listened to, you have gained that one. What gained that one, dude? <laughs> it's you have won your brother. See the difference? Exactly. It doesn't say you have gained that one. It's you have won your brother. No one got it? But if he does not listen to you, take one or two more with you. 
so that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every fact may be confirmed. And if he refuses to listen to that to them, let it, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as the Gentile and tax collector. Gain that one, or is it you've won your brother? That's what happens when you want to be gender inclusive because people with common sense will understand. If you have common sense, you understand brother here is inclusive of all the members of the body of Christ, not just males, but females, so that it should be the job of the teacher to explain. This is referring to all the members of the church, males or females. But when you then introduce that into your translation, and then you decide to explain it for the reader. And by the way, all translations are interpretations, but a good translation will try to be as faithful to the original as possible, as possible. But they're already telling you what it means. You've regained that one, meaning you've regained your brother or sister. You with me there? With you. So you get the point, right? Yeah, and here, watch. Thank you. Look what they do with homosexuality. Watch. <clears throat> New Revised Standard Version, updated edition. Watch here. You guys, I hope you're learning the importance of this. I know you think it's a distraction. No, it isn't. It's not a distraction. Because translations will even impact the doctrines such as the Trinity. Even core doctrines can be impacted by the way you translate. I'm not lying. I'll show you. But then I'll explain why translations went with the word Lord in the Hebrew Old Testament. I'm not done yet. You watch here. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11. Do you not know that the wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of heaven? Do not be deceived. The sexually immoral, idolaters, adulterers, male prostitutes, men who engage in illicit sex. You see what they did? You see what they did? Male prostitutes. But watch the accurate translation. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate like that queer bait, Louis Faggot, Faggot Art, nor homosexuals, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals. How do they translate it? Male prostitutes, men who engage in illicit sex. There is no condemnation of homosexuality anymore. See it? It's almost like the new revised standard version is trying to appease TikTok. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you can't use these words. What do you want me to do? <laughs> it's, all, it's all good. Okay. Now, guys, let me tell you how graphic Paul is in the Greek. Okay, I'm going to have to keep, because this guy in China, TikTok, I don't know. Notice, nor effeminate, right? The Greek word is malakos. Malakos. Look how they translate it, male prostitutes. Everyone condemns prostitution, whether male or female. That's not what Paul was talking about. The Greek word is malakos. Malakos means the man who is the passive recipient in the homosexual relation. The man who's acting like the woman who's being penetrated. Therefore, the homosexual is the one who's doing the penetration. That's how graphic Paul is. He's saying both the one who gets it and the one doing it in the same sex relation, they're condemned if they don't repent. Everyone got it? I'm with you. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, here you go. Look at the Greek. You know what they're doing to your Bibles and you guys are asleep? Because they're not warning you in your churches, man. Warning you in your churches. Let's go here. Watch here. Think I'm lying? Here you go. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Okay. Malaki. Plural of malakos. Malaki, plural of malakos. Malaki, malakos, soft effeminate, like Louis Faggot Hart, the fag. Soft effeminate, meaning the man who acts like the woman. The man. Now, guys, you see how God condemns being effeminate queer baits, even spiritually, not just physically? He wants bold lions and lionesses. 
soft, a person soft, delicate, effeminate. Thayers, malakis, soft, soft to touch. Okay, let's look at it. Soft raiment. Okay, like the Latin molus, metaphorically in a bad sense, effeminate of a catamite, a male who submits his body to a natural lewdness. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Under the end. You understand what it means, right? We're trying to keep it G-rated. What's up, my brother Lepanto? You understand what it means? Yes. All right. What is the word for homosexual? All right. Watch here. We go back here. Arsinokite. Arsinokite. It's two words that Paul combined based on his reading of Leviticus. To show the one who does the penetration. Arsi, arsinokite. From what? Arsina, arsinokitis. Kitis. A male engaging in same gender sexual activity. You see the word here? Sodomite. You know what a sodomite is, right? The one who penetrates. Correct. So Paul, by inspiration of the Spirit, goes out his way to show both roles. The man who's getting it and the man doing it condemned if they don't repent. But if you go with the New Revised Standard Version, you know what God is condemning? Just don't be a male prostitute <laughs> and don't commit an illicit sexual relation, but you can have a healthy, vibrant, homosexual relation or lesbian relation and still be a Christian. That's what they're trying to program you into believing. Here it is. Right? Male prostitutes may not engage in illicit sex. You got it? Yes. What about 1 Timothy 1.10? Same word. Arsino kitis is used there. Let's see. So translations will really affect your theology. Believe it or not, it will even affect the deity of Christ if you have the wrong translation. Mm -hmm. Can I spend some time on that? Yeah, exactly. Let me show you. I'm going to use it, the most blatant perversion of the New Testament, showing you how translation can water down the deity of Christ, the oral translation. So I'm pre preparing you. If you want to do a part two, we can, because you know it's up to you when you want to wrap up, because this was important. Yeah, Sam, definitely, definitely, brother, a part two where we can uh, get yeah. into it. So I can wrap up this with showing you how translations do matter when it comes to identifying Jesus as Yahweh. And then we can come and do a part two because there's a lot of material, but this was good warm up. I don't want to take too much time, but let me at least finish that one point. We take it from there. Okay, here. Sexual immoral, yeah, okay. Men who engage in illicit sex. What is that? Homosexuals. Well, hold on. How are you gonna know homosexuality is illicit sex? You don't know that unless you have a Bible telling you that. Right? And look also how beautiful our Bible is. Those who kidnap people, like sex trafficking, you're condemned to hell. There they got it right. Yeah, they do, Brittany. Gay affirming churches use this watered down liberal translation. Yep, they do. They do. You see it? <clears throat> okay. Why did I spend all this time, which you think may have been a waste of your time? No, it wasn't. I was showing you the importance of Bible translations because they will affect your understanding of the nature of God, the work of God, of salvation, and what your responsibility is in regards to Living a life pleasing to the Lord so you can dwell with him. It will affect your view of the Trinity, deity of Christ, God in flesh. That's why I spent time. Now, let me make one final point. If you're wondering why then do most English translations go with the word Lord in place of the divine name? Let me make that final point. And then we'll, and then we'll wrap it up with the New World Translation. Here's why. You know, again, to make my point, we're going to cancel this out. 
why do we have, in the case of modern translations, them using the word Lord in all capitals, in all capitals, as a substitute for the name Yahweh or Yahoo, Jaho or Jehovah, because I'm going to explain why. Okay. Notice here, Legacy Standard Bible uses Yahweh because the divine name appears. NIV uses the word Lord in all capitals, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Now I'm going to explain to you why. You ready? Very important. Stuff you may not get in your church. In fact, here, let me let me get let me ask the question. Let me ask the question. When's the last time? When's the last time you had your priest, bishop, pastor go this in depth on Bible translations and the use of the divine name? Can you tell me when the last time? When you see the word Lord in all capitals, like NIV, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital E, in the Old Testament. Only in the Old Testament. Does not apply in the New Testament. They're telling you it's a divine name. Yud, He, Wa, or Vav, He. Okay? Only Old Testament. Only Old Testament. The New Testament doesn't have the four Hebrew consonants. Doesn't have it. Why? It's written in Greek, and I'm explaining to you the reason why the Lord is used in some cases. Now, you heard from Edwin Palmer, who was responsible for NIV, who's part of the translation. He said it was the issue of money, right? He admitted, well, we didn't want to go with the form of divine name in the Hebrew because we spent two and a half million dollars and we don't want to lose money and no one reading it. So he admitted his motive was money. Okay, now, not everyone's motive is that reason. For example, King James Version. In the Old Testament, they'll render the divine name as Jehovah only in a handful of places. Let me show you. By the way, are you enjoying this too, brother, or you think it was a waste of time? It's not a waste of time ever. What is it? It's never a waste of time, Sam. Because I was about to smash somebody, not you. <laughs> okay, here. King James Version. King James Version. Exodus 3.15. They will use the word Jehovah in a few places. Let me show you the places, okay? Psalm 68, 4, okay, 83, 18. But most of the time, they will use the word Lord in all capitals. Why is that? Okay, I'll explain. Just be patient. Not everyone's motives are sinister. Not everyone, not everyone, right, is because of money. Okay, let me go to King James Version. You'll see why. Bear with me. I got to be honest and give you the full facts. May the Lord perfect me to recall the facts and present them accurately. And may he give me the power to practice what I preach and have mercy on me to finish the race in integrity. Okay. Here. Mm -hmm. Okay. They didn't do it here. I was supposed to do it right here. Let me do this. Sorry. Yeah, they didn't do that. Okay, here we go. Exodus 6, 3. And I appeared unto Abraham and unto Isaac and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty, but by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. Everyone got it? By my name, Jehovah, I was not known to them. There it is. Okay? So there you find it. Okay, watch here. Now let's go to Psalm 68.4. Sing unto God, sing praises to his name, authorized King James Version. Extol them that write upon the heavens by his name, Jah. Because in Hebrew, it's yud He, Shortened form of yud He vav He, Jah, and rejoice before him. Psalm 83, 18, authorized King James Version. That men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. See it? Everyone got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. But in Psalm 110, verse 1, where the divine name appears, they don't have Jehovah. It's Lord, all capitals. The Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, said unto my Lord. Jehovah said unto Adoni. Why? Well, now you're going to see. Not everyone's motives were sinister or satanic. Not everyone. Well, Edwin Palmer told you what his motives was, right? From the horse's mouth. We don't want to lose money. Shame on him. May the Lord have mercy on him. He's since deceased. I pray he's found favor with the Lord. And the Lord forgive us all. And we dwell with Christ forever. Okay, now. 
here's why it begins with the new testament the reason why you'll find most translations unless they come out and state otherwise using the word lord all capitals capital l capital o capital r capital d or using the word god all capitals for the divine name is because of the new testament remember the new testament is written in greek let me show you the difference when the New Testament writers, inspired by the Holy Spirit, wrote either the words, deeds of Christ, or the Acts of the Apostles, or wrote to their audience and quoted the Old Testament where the divine name appears. They didn't use the divine name. Let me give you an example. They used a synonym for the divine name, a substitute. And here you're going to see it clearly. Okay? I'm going to show you from Mark who quote Jesus' words in Greek. But watch. And you're going to see the difference. Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 5. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh is our God. Yahweh is one. Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Echad. You shall love Yahweh your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Now, when our Lord is asked, what is the greatest of all commandments. Look what he quotes. Look what he quotes. Watch here. Mark 12, 29, 30. Jesus answered, the foremost is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord. Oh, doesn't use the divine name. And Mark wrote in Greek, Our God is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord, not Yahweh, your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. When Mark quotes the words of our Lord in Greek, he doesn't use the divine name. But in Hebrew, it's a divine name. Yahweh is our God. Yahweh is one. You shall love Yahweh your God. Not when Mark writes it in Greek. Because what is the word that Mark uses in the place of the divine name as a substitute? You don't need to guess. Thank God for internet. You only pay for internet. Everything is free. Watch here. Okay, watch here. Here you go. Greek. Mark 12, 29. You don't even need to read Greek. It's transliterated. Look what it uses. Kyrios. Kyrios is the Greek word for Lord. See it? Greek yep. word for Lord. So Mark, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and the other writers would use the word Kyrios, the Greek word for Lord, in place of the divine name. Kyrios o theos emon, Kyrios is esteem. And then what about verse 30? Now I'll explain to you why. Be patient. I got to make this point. And we got one more part and we're done, brother. Just be patient with me. Okay. I know you need attention. You want to leave. You're like, man, I need beauty sleep. No, no. I had a question for you. I didn't want to ask me the question before I move on. Oh, so in Mark 12, 29, in the LSB says, the Lord, our God is one Lord. They put the one before the Lord. Would you render it that way? It's debatable. Is it Lord is one or one? the one? The Lord is one Lord. It's debatable. Okay. Yeah, it's debatable. So is it saying it's one Lord or the Lord is one? Meaning there is no other besides him. I mean, it's, it doesn't matter. It's debatable because in the Greek, it's Kyrios is estin, Lord, one he is. Well, that's not smooth English. How do you translate that smoothly in English? Lord, one is. Kyrios is, Lord, one, estin, is. You're not going to translate Lord, one is. That's not good English. How would you translate English? Yeah, I, I see. One Lord. The Lord our God is one Lord. Yeah, Unitarians, they try to get slick by saying the Lord, our God, the Lord is one Lord. They add three Lords in there. All right. So then thank you for affirming the Trinity. <laughs> you said three, right? <laughs> and why would we assume that there are three Yahwehs? There is one Yahweh. Mm -hmm. How does that refute the Trinity? Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's silly. That shows how desperate they are. Now, everyone on my Facebook and on my page and on your pages, do they understand and get all this? Yep, it appears to be so. I like that. You sound like Elizabethan Shakespearean King James English. It appears to be so. <laughs> okay. Everyone understood? Okay. Now, if you understand, 
Did you see the Greek New Testament when it's quoting an Old Testament text where the divine name appears? They who wrote the books of the New Testament in Greek under the space of the Holy Spirit, Koine Greek, use the word Kyrios, Kyrios, which is the Greek word for Lord. Okay, why? Why do they do that? Now, learn your history. You ready? Ready. Okay. Why? Here's why. During the time of our Lord, during the time of our Lord, the Jews came up with a tradition, a tradition of the Jews. In order to prevent people from violating one of the Ten Commandments, you shall not employ the name of Yahweh your God in vain. You shall not employ the name of the Yahweh your God in vain. Here it is. In order to make sure, in order to prevent from misusing the divine name and coming under God's wrath, started using substitutes for the divine name. Right? So they wouldn't use the divine name, Yahweh, here, because of fear of this command. Exodus 20, verse 7. Now, Brittany, I hope you're listening. Exodus 20, verse 7. You shall not take the name of Yahweh your God in vain, for Yahweh will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. So what they did was, they did what's called putting a fence around the Torah. They fenced the Torah, meaning taking extra ordinary precautions, extra measures to make it almost impossible for you to violate these commands and be, bring God's wrath. That's why they came up with so many traditions. Okay? Traditions to make it almost impossible for you to break these commands. Now, a lot of these traditions actually contradicted the written word and went against it. So one of the traditions they come up with is you will not use the divine name in everyday conversation. You're going to use a substitute. So what was the substitute they used in Hebrew when they spoke in Hebrew? Adonai. Adonai. Variously spelled, right? Well, Adonai in Hebrew is the word Lord. So they wouldn't say, Hero Israel, Yahweh. They would say, Hero Israel, Adonai, Elohino, Adonai, Echad. Everyone got it? But now, what if you're a Jew who can no longer speak Hebrew? Because many Jews, after the Babylonian captivity, could not speak Hebrew, could not read or write Hebrew. They could read and or write Aramaic and speak Aramaic. Well, then you would use Mar, Mar, Mari, Mar, Mari, which is Aramaic for Lord. But then you had Jews because of Alexander the Great of Macedonia of Greek, Hellenizing the world. The Jews who remained scattered couldn't even read or write or speak Aramaic. So what did they do? Koine Greek. Koine Greek. So what was the word they use in Koine Greek? Kyrios. Adonai, Hebrew for Lord, Mari, Mar, Aramaic for Lord, Kyrios, Greek for Lord. So they would use the term Lord in place of the divine name. That's why in the Greek versions of the Old Testament, they use the word Kyrios, Lord, for the divine name. Or in the Latin versions... Of the Old Testament, Latin Vulgate, they use the word Dominus, Lord, for the divine name. What does this mean? If you are Orthodox and you only follow the Greek versions of the Old Testament, then yes, the word you use is Lord. Just like we find in the New Testament. So what does that mean? If you believe the books of the New Testament are inspired, that means Holy Spirit authorized, approved, and permitted, and amen, the use of Lord in the place of the divine name. Because we believe the writers of the New Testament were inspired, and the Spirit moved them to say, Lord, not Yahweh, whenever the divine name appeared. And in Greek, it would be Kyrios. That means it is not sinful, and it is not <clears throat> something that God condemns to use the word Lord in the place of divine name when you are speaking or translating. But now, let me caution you. If you go with the Greek versions of the Old Testament, then you have 
the word Kyrios Lord in the place of the divine name. Okay, that's okay. Why? Because the Greek New Testament uses the word Kyrios for the divine name. But if you're going to go with the Hebrew, here's the key. If you're going to go with the Hebrew and you're going to translate the Hebrew, then since the Hebrew has a divine name, then why aren't you using a form of the divine name in your English translation if you're going with the Hebrew Old Testament? The Orthodox do not accept the Hebrew Old Testament. They believe the Hebrew manuscripts because they're later, they're less reliable. So they go with the Greek versions called the Septuagint. And in those versions, it's the word Kyrios, Lord. So the Orthodox have, have a valid reason. But if you're going with the Hebrew Old Testament, and you know that over 6,800 times the divine name appears, then why don't you use a form of that name so that people who read the English translation of the Hebrew Old Testament can see, oh, it's the divine name. And then when they go to New Testament, they see that the New Testament authors who are inspired are using a substitute for the divine name with God's approval. You get my point? Everyone got it? Tyrell, I don't know what the hell you're talking about if you're on your own tangent. Because I don't know if you want attention. Not on LB's watch because he's going to block you from his, his channel. Yeah, and not, I, not just that on TikTok as well. This is not a conversation about Mary. Stop the conversation or you're both going to get muted, buddy in Jerusalem. Yeah, or we're going to talk about your mothers and why the Shia love them. All right, everyone got it? Yeah. The, so, the meaning, if you're not Orthodox and you don't prioritize the Greek versions of the Old Testament called the Septuagint, or if you're not Roman Catholic and go with the Latin Vulgate, but you go with the Hebrew Old Testament, then you want a translation in English of the Hebrew Old Testament that uses a form of divine name. It only appears in the Old Testament. In Revelation, the form of the divine name, I'm sorry, in the New Testament, I hope I said New Testament, the form of divine name never appears even when the New Testament writers are quoting an Old Testament verse that has a divine name. And the closest we get in Greek, to a form of divine name is in Revelation 19. You guys want me to show you that? Yeah. How many of you guys want to see it? We will. I know you do, bro. Know. Looks like we do here as well. Too okay. Time. I need your feedback because this is your class being used by the Holy Spirit to guide me to speak to those issues that the Spirit wants you to learn. In the Greek New Testament of 27 books, the form of the divine name never appears. The Greek form of it never appears. The closest you get is in a phrase that appears only in Revelation 19. And it appears in verse 1, verses 3 and 4, and 6. It appears four times. The Greek that John wrote, John wrote in Koine Greek when he wrote Revelation, he transliterates what he hears the inhabitants of heaven say. He has in Greek the word Alleluia, which is the Greek, transliteration of hallelujah so john is hearing them in heaven shout hallelujah which would be hebrew in heaven and he transliterates it in greek as alleluia and the ya at the end is the greek form of the divine name yud hey let me show you tell me if they're all being blessed by this in your channel <clears throat> Absolutely. So far, so good, Sam. Thank okay, you. Okay, here it is. After these things, I heard a loud voice of a great crowd in heaven saying, Hallelujah. The Greek is Hallelujah. Now here, the Ja is the abbreviated form of the name. yud he vav he yud he wah he Yahweh, Yahweh. Here, it would be Yah. Yah in Hebrew, Yud He, because this is a compound word, Hallelujah, meaning praise Yah, praise Jah, praise Jehovah. Hallel in Hebrew means praise. And John is hearing them say that in heaven. Hallelujah, salvation, glory, and power belong to our God because his judgments are true and righteous. For he has judged the great harlot who is corrupting the earth. That's why I said Louis Fagadar. 
He's a son of a spiritual whore, a prostitute, or a Babylon. That's his mother. And as well as Anthony Rogers. The earth with her sexual morality, and he's avenged the blood of his slaves and sh shed by her hand. And a second time they said, Hallelujah. Hallel, Hebrew for praise. Praise, Yah, Yud, Hey. The abbreviate shortened form for Yahuwah, Yahovah, Yaho, however you want to pronounce it. Her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worship God who sits on the throne saying, Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hallel, praise, Yah. And a voice came from the throne saying, Give praise to our God, all you his slaves, you who fear him, the small and the great. Then I heard something like the voice of a great crowd, and like the sound of many waters, and like the sound of many peals of thunder saying, Hallelujah. So the word Hallelujah, Hebrew, which in Greek translation is Hallelujah, Alleluia appears four times in Revelation 19, verse 1, verses 3 and 4, and 6. So this is the only time you find a form of the divine name in the Greek New Testament. Only time. For the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. So let me show you the Greek. And then one final thing, we're done, brother. Why translations will have an impact on the divine name. So if you want, we can do part two sometime tomorrow, Lord willing, wherever. Because we got to finish it. So yeah. no, it's a lot of time. Revelation 19.1. Okay, everyone got it? Mm -hmm. Everyone learning? Revelation 19.1. Here it is in transliteration. After these things, I heard something like a voice saying, what in heaven? Alleluia. This would be Aota Alpha. Aota Alpha, the two Greek letters. My memory doesn't fail me. Aota Alpha. That means in Greek, the Aota Alpha stand for Yud He. So how would you write Yud He in Greek? Aota Alpha Ya. Allelu Ya. That's not even a Greek word. It's a transliteration where he took the Hebrew word and transliterated in Greek, and now it's part of the Greek language. Okay, everyone got it? Yep. Here it is. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. Literally, praise Yahweh. Transliterated. It's not a translation. Transliteration. Where you take a word in one language and spell it out with the alphabets of another language. All right? Alleluia. Literally, praise Yahweh. Without the initial H is actually a misspelling. Yeah, okay. Whatever. <laughs> and where does it come? Hebrew origin. Hallel. Yah. Hallel. What does it mean? Hallel. To be boastful to praise. Now, when's the last time your priest, your bishop, your pastor, your church taught you this? No, the Vulgate was not from the Septuagint. Jerome, one of the greatest church fathers and biblical scholars who ever lived. He studied Hebrew from the rabbis so he could translate from the Hebrew Old Testament into Latin. He knew Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek, and Latin. So he translated directly from Hebrew into Latin for his Vulgate. So with that said, let's wrap it up. Why translations matter and will affect your view of Jesus as God. Let me show you. Watch this wicked, satanic perversion of Scripture called the Newer Translation of those Witnesses. Watch where you have all the key references referring to Jesus as God. Look at how they mistranslate. Okay, watch. And Lord willing, in part two, we'll go deeper. But I just want you to show this is deliberate. It's like every time where you find a passage that identifies Jesus as God, as Yahweh, they will find a way to mistranslate. Here, John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. You see why translations matter? You got it? With let's you. go through this and we'll wrap it up unless you want to do more but it's up to you yeah. all right john 1 18 let's go to john 1 18 look deliberate it's not one or two places where yeah it's disputable it's consistently a denial and deity of christ no man has seen god anytime the only begotten god lowercase g see that yeah all right but watch what about john 10 33 where the jews said you a man make yourself out to be god I'll give you 
the examples where Jesus called God and how they consistently translate where Jesus is not God in absolute sense or not even referred to as God. Here, John 5, 18. I'm sorry, John 10, 33. The Jews answered him, we are stoning you not for a fine work, but for blasphemy. For you, although being, being a man, make yourself out a God, lowercase g. Everyone got it? Yep. All right, hold on. You think this is a few instances? With the exception of John 20, 28, which they couldn't get around, where Thomas says, my Lord, my God, which they try to explain away. All the places that refer to Jesus as God, they will mistranslate it in such a way where he's God in a lesser sense, or it's not even referring to him as God. Here's another one. Acts 20, 28. Acts 20, 28. It's only a handful of examples. We're done, brother. Unless you want to continue, it's up to you. Acts 20, 28. Here you go. Pay attention to yourselves and to all the flock among which Holy Spirit. Now notice the blasphemy. Holy Spirit, lowercase h, lowercase s. Because to them, Holy Spirit is not a person. He's a force, an energy. So they keep the h lowercase and the s lowercase. Has appointed overseers to shepherd the congregation of God, which he purchased with the blood of his own son. Number one, the word son is not in the Greek. Don't believe me? Check it out. Even there in two linear. The word son is not in the Greek. It literally says, God purchased the church with his own blood, the blood of his own. They added the word son. So it's not God who shed his blood when he became flesh. See that? Yeah. Okay, a few more examples because there's Titus 2.13. Romans 9.5, I'm sorry. Look, if you read Romans 9.5, an accurate translation says that Christ, who according to the flesh, is a physical descendant of the Israelites, but he is overall the eternally praised God. So he's both God and man, and he's God who's praised forever, and he's supreme overall. Not if you have this Bible. Look at how they translate it. Romans 9, verse 5. To them, the forefathers belong, and from them, the Christ is sent according to flesh. Full stop, period. Full stop. God, who is over all, be praised forever. Amen. So they put a period here, start a new sentence, so that God here is not identified as Christ. So he's not the God who's over all, the one to be praised forever. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Three more examples. And Lord willing, when we get into Jesus being Yahweh, I'll be getting into that. Lord willing. What about Titus 2.13, where Jesus is called our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Watch how they translate it. Titus 2.13. Titus 2.13. While we wait for the happy hope and glorious manifestation of the great God and of our Savior Jesus Christ, making it seem like two. The great God, who's not Jesus, and of our Savior Jesus Christ. <laughs> what about Hebrews 1.8, where the Father says to the Son, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. So he's calling God, Jesus God, who reigns forever. Hebrews 1.8. They do it with all the major verses. If you can't see this is a satanic agenda to rob Jesus of his glory, to deceive Joe's witnesses, then you're more blind than you know. Here. Hebrews 1.8. We'll read a translation. You'll see it says, but about the Son, he says, your throne, O God. Here, no. But about the Son, says, God is your throne. So it's not that Jesus is called God, but God is saying, I, God, am your throne. I, God, am your authority. See it? And the final one, 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, where again, like Paul, Peter calls Jesus our God and Savior. But look at them. It's not our God and Savior. Through the righteousness of our God and the Savior, Jesus Christ. So our God is one, the Savior is another, two persons. But you know what's amazing? If you read Peter in Greek, he uses the same exact Greek construction in verse 11. So notice here, it's of our God and the Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But verse 11, same exact Greek construction, they get it right. And to the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's identical in Greek, but here there's no doubt. So that you have no doubt, Peter's calling both Christ our Lord and Savior. But when the Greek is the same exact construction here, 
They add the word the, so you don't see that Jesus is also our God. Got it? Yes. And we're done. Now, if you have anything else you want me to cover or you want to make it this the, part one, we can do part two some other time. It's up to you. Yeah, we'll do this as part one.